Hello Revit enthusiasts, this is Kurt Egley, Building Solutions Engineer with Synergist Engineering Design Solutions here with another Revit uh, video clip for you. So today we're going to talk about building pads which automatically cut through topo surfaces in Revit the way that that basement passes beyond the surface of the ground. I'm going to do this in two parts. First video here will go over the simplest one where the building walls are in the same project as the topo surface and then I'll make another video that's part two where there's a Revit project that is linked to the topo surface. So let's go ahead and give that a try then. I started with a blank project here. I'm on the site notice and um, I'll create a topo surface first for you. It'll be about four minutes into this video where I actually place the building pad but you can do this by a couple different methods. I'm just going to create a few points Right now my elevation in the options bar is set for zero. So right now if I just were to place these four, it would be a flat surface that I'd cut through. Um, but you can also pick on the top of the points and drag them to a new location if you feel like to change the shape of it. Um, but uh, also notice since the properties are coming up in the property palette and in the options bar, that if we wanted to move one of the corners up to 15 feet, I just select on top of it, say be 15 feet. And now the two right corners are at 15 feet, the two left corners are at zero, so you're seeing the one foot contours there. And I'll hit the green check mark to finish it. Our surface is created. Looks something like this in plan. I'll make a 3D view by selecting on the little default 3D view doghouse up there. Um, we'll orbit around a little bit in shaded mode so you can see this once. It, it looks flat though, doesn't it? If you look at it from the side though, so I'll use the front elevation, you can see that it does slope up. Um, not real helpful though to be able to imagine how this surface might be without any solid underneath it. So the section box over here in the property palette, I'm going to turn that on. And then while I'm in the 3D view, I'll look down on top of it. And I'll take the section box and move it in so that it cuts the edges of the topo surface. So I'll drag them forward, drag it forward. Now kind of a weird thing happens when I've done that. I can go look at it from another view and now it looks like a solid. You can even see the little earth poche, the hatching pattern on the edge of it there. So you can see more readily our three-dimensional surface. So I'll go back to the site once again and let's place four walls. We're just going to do this very simple four walls that will be below the surface and above the surface of the uh, top plane. So I'll just use my rectangle tool and I'll use a base offset as like negative 12 feet or something to make it go down into a basement. And I'll make it go up to the second level and then maybe add on another 7 feet or something like that onto the top offset there. So to be sure that we're up above the plane of the ground. Um, that'll more readily show the process here. So just placing the walls, here's the thing, it to, you know, the topo surface is not aware that the walls pass through it. If you look in 3D, uh, you can still see the surface um, that goes right through inside our building, right? So if that was a basement, not so hot. So here's where the building pad comes into play. Back at the site plan. Now that I have a topo surface, the building pad button on the ribbon will be um, not grayed out anymore so it's under the massing tab see the building pad there and I'll just create a rectangular one from outside corner to outside corner and maybe make the height offset negative 11 feet you know to make it drive down short of a foot of where my walls go to nothing magical about these numbers create a boundary hit finish it's still highlighted but notice if I de-highlight it there's no more contours that cut through that it's more obvious if you look at it over in 3D and you can see that it the topo surface cuts all the way through it. So now they're aware of each other. So you would if your building is obviously not square, you just make a you know one that follows around the boundary of your building to make sure you cut through the topo surface. Just lastly, I'll cut a section through it once too. Um, so you can kind of see how Revit is handling this. I'll just right click on that and say go to view you can see that the poche pattern, although it's at one inch equal 20 feet, um, I'll put it at quarter inch so you can see that the hatch pattern changed a little bit, um, is now 
um, a void where our building sits. So part two will work on two different Revit files that are in uh, separate files and linked.